Hi everyone, Jeff Johnson, creator of Weathermaker. I've recently added cloud profiles to Weathermaker and this will be in version 3.0. Cloud profiles are a very powerful way to create different types of clouds for your game. There's a lot of options and a lot to cover in this video, so let's get started. First thing you'll notice is that in the clouds a game object underneath sky, there's a cloud profile set to a null profile right now which means there's no clouds. So there's two ways that you can work with clouds in Weathermaker. On your Weathermaker script on the root you have a weather profile. This is one way to work with clouds. So let me go find Weathermaker prefab profiles and find a weather profile. How about heavy clouds? Now this will bring in clouds into the scene. I think this animates over about 15 or 30 seconds or something. You'll notice in this weather profile for the heavy clouds that the cloud profile is set to none. But there's also this cloud type enum and it's set to heavy, which basically means it's going to look in the clouds profile and load the heavy dark profile. <clears throat> If you have a custom cloud profile that you want to attach to your weather profile, you can drag your cloud profile into this cloud profile slot here and change the cloud type to custom. This will prevent it from auto-loading a cloud based on this enum. So set that to custom and drag your custom clouds into that cloud profile. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and clear the weather profile and I'm going to just work with cloud profiles for now. There we go. Okay, so let's move on to cloud profiles. I've created several profiles in here. We've got the heavy, bright, and dark, light, medium, and storm, which all map to the existing clouds that you're familiar with in this combo box here. I've also added a gloomy, partly cloudy, and puffy st and storm multi-layer clouds as well. So let's get started at looking at what these look like so you can kind of get an idea of what kind of clouds are possible with Weathermaker in this update. Let's start with the gloomy clouds. <clears throat> so we've got kind of several layers going on here. We've got a lower layer that's moving a little faster, a middle layer that's kind of these dark spots, and an upper gray layer. Uh, this partly cloudy layer also, or profile also has three layers. If you look way up top, you've got these wispy cirrus clouds. And in the kind of middle, you've got these kind of larger smoky wispy clouds. And then you've got kind of the cumulo patches here, a little puffy patches here and there. So there's actually three layers on this profile. Puffy uh, takes the cumulus to a little bit higher level, and there's more of those, and there's kind of darker, grayer clouds, and then again, on the top layer, the cirrus clouds. And then finally, the multi-layer storm. You can kind of see there's these fast-moving low-level patches, and then there's also a larger gray middle and upper layer as well. So let's take a look at what this looks like. I'm going to go ahead and pick a simpler profile, the light profile. You can see that this profile is basically what you get if you change this combo box to light, except that I've added the second layer for cirrus clouds up here. So let's take a look at this profile. There's a ton of properties here. Okay, there, there's just a lot. <laughs> So you'll want to just bear with me as I cover all, all of what these do, and then uh, hopefully you'll be a cloud master by the end of this. The first thing you'll note is that I've added support for up to four layers. So most of these parameters have a parameter and then a 2, 3, 4 for each layer. Layer 4 is rendered first, followed by layer 3, 2, and then 1. So you can think of layer 4 as the highest layer and then this as the lowest layer. So we've got the noise textures that you're already familiar with. So I'm going to try dragging in different noise textures here so you can see what happens. So if I was to change this noise texture here, I'm 
maybe that's the same texture, so let's swap it to that. Okay, there we go. Different noise. <clears throat> so you're basically changing the noise by setting that texture. And then again, for the upper layer, you can change that. So if I wanted maybe this whirly noise in the upper layer, I could do that. And then, of course, now we have scales for each of the four layers. Uh, and also, the scale is up to four octaves, so you can sample your noise up to four times for each layer at different scales. So if I was to change this, it would make the scale smaller or larger for that top layer. Uh, it's kind of hard to see that, but let's increase the multiplier here. There we go. Now you can see lots of clouds up there and obviously these scales generally need to be kind of small depending on your noise. So let's undo all that. You kind of get an idea of how this works. Uh, I can change the noise on the smaller layer as well. So let's get back to that cirrus texture up there. Okay, so let's show you how this scale works. Get, looking at some good clouds here. So you saw that as I decreased the scale that the noise spread out more that as I increase the scale it becomes more grainy and repeats more. So it's up to you how you want to work these scales. Combining the scales with the noise multiplier will give you your cloud effect for that layer. So if I change this noise multiplier to 1 and change the others to 0, it will only sample the texture one time at this scale here, the X scale. So only this scale is taken into account now. No other scales are. Now I can add a split the multiplier and it will use two separate scales. And let's increase the velocity a little bit so you can see how these clouds kind of morph using these different scales. Might even speed that up a little more. Okay. <clears throat> so in order to get kind of the morphing effect, you can play around with your scales. If you just take a look at these clouds as they move, they're kind of changing as the layers are sampled, as the texture is sampled at different scales. You get kind of a, a cloud that changes its appearance as it moves. Pretty neat. To lessen the effect of the change, you can change these scales and make the second multiplier a little bit smaller so that you don't get as much of a drastic change. And then you, may, you can even go lower than that. So now the cloud's changing just a little bit. You can see as it moves that it's barely changing. So it's a little bit less wispy as the multiplier on the first one is higher. So it just depends on how much wispiness and change you want. So if you wanted lots of change, you could set all four multipliers to diff equal values. And that way these four scales are computed equally, which will give your clouds quite a bit of variety and change as they move. Okay, so I'm going to undo all of that, get this profile back to the way it was. Okay, almost there. Here we are. Great. So back to this light profile. Alright, so let's move on to... We've covered cloud noise, noise scale, and noise multipliers. So now we're going to look at cloud noise rotation. So this is an interesting one because it allows you to move, rotate your clouds in the sky. This will help it, be, help it be so that if you have a landmark like a large mountain or a big castle, you don't want the clouds to be kind of looking the same over that part. You can actually change this rotation. So if I want to rotate the clouds 45 degrees, they're, they're moving. It's a random number between min and max. So if I increase the max, they're going to get a random rotation between 45 and 91, 92. So they're just moving ever so slightly as you change that value. So it's the same noise texture, same everything, except it spins the clouds in the sky. It just gives a different look. Again, if you have those landmarks in your game, you don't want the player to be like, oh, the clouds look exactly the same every time over this landmark. All right, so that's rotation. I'm going to change that back to zero. Remember, in play mode, if you drag one of these cloud profiles here and start changing stuff, even in play mode, 
the changes will be saved to your profile. So just be aware of that. That's helpful if that's what you want, but you can also end up screwing up your profile if you're in play mode and you think that your changes aren't being saved and you're just messing around. <clears throat> okay, you saw the velocity work. Uh, I don't think Y is being used yet. I am hopeful to do volumetric clouds in some time in the future, and at that point the Y velocity will get used, but for now it's ignored. Okay, so that takes care of that. Now we're going to look at cloud noise mask. This is a way to block out part of the sky with a separate texture. So I think I have a mask somewhere here. Cloud noise mask texture 1. So right now the the scale of my mask is way too high. It's 0.5, which means the mask is going to repeat basically almost every pixel. So that's not what we want. So we make the mask smaller. Now you can actually see the mask being repeated. <clears throat> There's the shape of the mask texture. It's kind of this blob that in and of itself looks like a cloud. So as we make the mask bigger, we get a little bit nicer looking effect. You can see the mask shape still. So you probably want to go even bigger. I think that's probably a pretty good value. It might be too high. That's covering the whole sky but you can actually set noise mask velocity so if I change this eventually the mask will move through and I should be able to see some clouds I may need to increase that scale a little bit there we go so now I've got moving clouds with a mask that's also moving to really kinda give some variety to the sky here so as you can see if I ratchet these up higher the mask will move through quicker kind of like a wave a masky wave through the clouds so a, a good option if you kinda wanna have like a storm system moving through you can mask out part of the sky set a velocity and it will kind of move all of your clouds with the mask you can also offset the mask so if you just want the mask to move a little bit, I think you can change these. Um, I believe they're a value of 0 to 1. That just changes your mask position a little bit. So if you don't have mask velocity, it allows you to move your mask without having it continually move. We've also got mask rotation as well. So I'm going to ratchet up this scale, even though it's going to look bad you'll be able to see the rotation. So now the mask is rotating and as I increase that you can kind of see it spinning around, which is pretty neat. Okay, let's put those back to zero. So again, all of these are just a way to add extra variety into your scene. Um, that's pretty much what I'm going here for. The mask is nice because you don't have to create a separate noise texture that looks differently. You can just use this mask texture and change the appearance of your entire sky with just one noise texture. Alright, so I think that covers noise. I'm going to set this back to none. Now we have a full sky again. So this covers the first section of clouds, which is the noise. I'm going to go ahead and collapse all of this. We're now going to move down to appearance. So appearance is basically not how the clouds are created, not their structure, but their colors and so forth. So the first thing you'll note that there's cloud color. So with cloud color, I can change the, uh, the what's called the diffuse color of these clouds. So depending on what you want, you could have a scary red cloud, you could have a poisonous clouds, well, maybe you're making a Venus scene, in which case your clouds are full of methane or other gases that may be different colors. I'm not a chemist, so I don't know how that works, but you could change the colors of the clouds. Uh, the, you can also emit colors, so let's say I want this cloud to emit a red glow. I could set this to red, and you'll notice nothing happened. I need to raise my alpha value, which is the emission intensity. So now my clouds are kind of emitting this eerie red glow. You can kind of see that there. 
Uh, you'll notice it more probably if I lower the light in the scene. There we go. Now we've got very little light because the sun is gone. And we've just got these eerie red clouds that are emitting. So now we've got moonlight and red clouds, which is kind of cool. So Imagine gives you a lot of options there to create a nice looking scene. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and remove that for now so it doesn't stay on my profile. Okay, let's go back to daytime. Cloud height is, uh, is basically how high up the clouds are. Uh, the higher those values are as the player moves, the clouds will move less. So basically think of that exactly as it is. A height, maybe in meters, I think, is probably what I was going for. So as I lower that, you can see the clouds coming really low. And if I move... Actually, I'm going to take the velocity off just for a second so that you can see a low low clouds will move as I move. I probably also want to increase my speed. So like five, five, five. So now the clouds are really low. You can see that as I'm moving, clouds are going fast up above. But now let's go back and change that height back to 5,000. And as you would expect, clouds that are a lot further up will move a lot slower underneath the player. Now I'm moving pretty fast so those clouds are still moving. You could think of my speed right now as a supersonic jet. <clears throat> okay, so I think that's probably good for that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of velocity back to these clouds. And let's move on to cloud cover. So this is exactly what it sounds like. It's going to control how many clouds get created. The higher this value, the more clouds there are and the thicker they are. So tweak that to your liking. Uh, up above are those cirrus clouds. So as I raise that up, that cirrus texture gets sampled more and more aggressively. So depending on how many cirrus clouds you want, you could pop that up to get a very very thick layer of cirrus clouds. I kind of liked the more subtle effect myself so I kept that lower. Cloud density is a one way for your clouds to block light. As you raise the cloud density the clouds will get darker but they also will have the effect of dimming the sun. So at a density of 1 the sun intensity should be going down if it's working right. 0.8625, so I've already dimmed the sun intensity by doing that. Uh, combined with the cloud cover and the intensity, the sun will get dim. So watch the ground as I increase that cloud cover. The scene gets dark because it's blocking the sun. So that's what cloud density is. Just a way to say, hey, the particles in this cloud are more dense. Light absorption is a way to say how much does this cloud block light. It's a little bit different from density. It's more of a reflectivity property. So you can see right now this is reflecting light quite a lot. If I turn that down, now we're kind of absorbing and not reflecting much light at all. And then of course all the way up is maximum. The cirrus clouds up above I just set at 1 because I wanted them to always be white. <clears throat> okay, cloud sharpness is another interesting parameter. It basically controls how the cloud cover works. So you'll see as I raise this, the clouds kind of start disappearing. And then as you go to zero, it switches into a different mode where only the cloud cover is used and nothing else. Uh, depending on how you want to do this, you, you more, more than likely want your sharpness at about 0, 1, 5. Although I found for the cirrus clouds, this upper layer, setting the sharpness to 0 and just using the cloud cover worked pretty well. Although you could use sharpness for that upper layer. It just doesn't look quite as good, I found. So that's why I added the ability to set sharpness to 0, which will get your cloud cover working without a sharpness modifier. Cloud th shadow threshold. So let's go pop on 
shadows here. If we're lucky, this will actually work, and we'll see shadows on the ground. Not sure if we're going to get them. Sometimes the cloud shadows work, sometimes they don't. Maybe we need more cloud cover. Let's just try increasing the cover and see if we get some shadows. Oh, look, there they are. They're working. So you can see on the ground we've got these shadows all over the place. Uh, looks like they're a little bit but Oh, it's probably because I'm too high. All right, so let's take a look at the shadow threshold. This basically says which pixels are going to cast shadows. If you want every pixel to cast a shadow, set it to zero. That's probably not what you want because that's a little bit too much shadow. So maybe like 0 0.02 or 5, something you want. <clears throat> that looks pretty good. Let's see if I can get out of the shadow here. There we go. Now I'm out of the shadow. Coming back in. Alright, so that looks pretty good. Um, you'll notice that at the edge of the world the shadows look a little bit funny. That's because of the Unity projector. Uh, so don't worry about that. Most games I would expect you to have something on your horizon to deal with that. So not too concerned about that. But yeah, the Unity projector, once you hit the edge of the noise texture, it just kind of repeats the same pixel, which is looks really bad. but should be okay as long as you have a little bit of stuff on your horizon. So anyway, cloud shadow threshold just controls how dark, how dense the pixel of the cloud has to be before it casts a shadow. Uh, let's see, cloud shadow power is going to control how dark those shadows are. So at tiny values you get completely black shadows. So probably not what you wanted there but gives you an idea of that parameter. Probably 1.5 is pretty good. If you want darker shadows, just lower that. So that's shadows for you. You just have to activate Sky Sphere Cloud Shadow Projector. And we got an interesting Unity bug here. So we'll go ahead and deactivate that for now. <clears throat> okay, finally we have one last parameter to look at. And that is all the way at the bottom, cloud ray offset. So when you're looking at clouds, you often get this repeating pattern on the horizon. You can see there on the horizon that we just have this awful repeating pattern. So it looks bad. So you can raise this up to kind of move the cloud layer lower. Basically, it kind of wraps the clouds around the horizon more aggressively. So depending on what you want, you can set that. I thought point two was pretty good, but feel free to play with that. Okay, so a couple of notes on cloud profiles. Uh, these will work with Unity Network. The, I've already added the Unity Network script for integration. So when you set a weather profile, you can either use the... cloud type combo box or you can set the cloud profile with cloud type custom that should all just work with unity networking uh, cloud changes can be animated so you'll notice when I, when I change profiles using this combo box that the clouds animate uh, that's using a show clouds animated option which is in a script you can you can just look at the weather maker script to see that option that that is there uh, the weather maker full screen cloud script provides that function so if you want to change clouds in an animated fashion just set call that method with your new profile and the duration and it will smoothly animate to the new profile quite a few of the properties are animated i believe cloud cover density light absorption and all the scales and rotations and everything are animated so you can see that animate between different cloud profiles anyway this was a bit long sorry uh, very powerful though lots of layers 
four layers of clouds. I don't know of another asset on the asset store that gives you four layers and all of this ridiculous number of customization options. So go to town. Please email me, support at digitalruby.com. I'd be happy to help you out when I can. And thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day, everyone.